Hey everybody, Mike here. Today's review is going to be on this Fluke TS100 Pro. This meter is made specifically for more of your data comm or telecommunication industry technicians. So if that's not you and you're looking for something that's going to test more voltage and distance, this might be a little bit pricier tool than what you're willing to bargain for. There's probably other models on the market that, are, that fit you better. But if you're in the data comm industry and you're chasing down shorts and opens on various Cat5 wires, twisted pair, copper in the field, if you're in the phone industry, this meter might be for you. This meter came out as more of an upgrade to the TS100 that had been out for years. This one's been out for over a decade as well and I've only had experience with this meter for about the last four or five years since it was supplied to me to use. Personally my opinion on this meter is I don't have any problems with it. I think it's a really good meter. It has some really nice upgrades and features added to it over at the TS100 model. In all honesty if you're just getting started in the industry and you're trying to acquire all the tools that you need to get this job done this meter can add up fast and really eat into your budget. This might be a better meter to pick up a little bit later in the years once you've gotten established and you might consider just going with the TS100. Now when it comes to this meter versus the TS100 I'll explain the couple differences that make this meter so great. On your regular TS100, you were limited up to 3,000 feet of cable length that you were able to look at and diagnose. On this one here, you're able to go up to 8,000 feet, and it also has the ability to pick up bridge taps as well. So as you know, in the DSL industry, which I know, yes, for everything most, most nowadays is going to fiber to the home, copper's kind of becoming a dying breed, but there's still a lot of it out there, especially in the rural community, which is where I service these days. Most of those bridge taps have been taken off the lines over the years, but there's still quite a few of them out there. And whenever I come across one of those lines, I suspect that there's a bridge tap in the line. This is the meter I go to and grab to see if I can try to get a close distance to that. And then it's also got a BT filter mode up here at the top as well that you can cycle up to. And that'll allow you to skip over the first bridge tap to see if there's a second bridge tap in the line as well. Now when it comes to the bridge taps, like I mentioned, you got that BT filter so you're able to filter out that first bridge tap and potentially see a second one in the line. It can also sense a bridge tap up to 3,200 feet. So you got 8,000 feet on your open meter or your shorts, 3,200 feet on your bridge taps. It also can sense AC DC voltage, which has the little LED here at the top as well that'll illuminate if it senses voltage on the line. Just like your regular TS100, it's got your alligator clips here. That's how you clip onto your wire. It does have the bed and nails built into it and it's got the spike here towards the bottom, which makes it handy so you don't strip off the insulation on a cable pair when you're looking at measurements. That's your meter here that comes in the little carrying case. Backside's got the cover that houses four AA batteries. That's how that unit powers up. Same three button design that your TS100 has. It's got your power button and your test button as well as your up and down arrows to cycle through some of those features that I just explained to you. And then you've got your BNC connection here at the top to connect your leads to. And then on the back of this meter here is a graph that shows you all of your VOP settings that you can set this meter to. The only thing that part as far as setting that goes is instead of holding both buttons down and hitting the power button, you only hold the up arrow to power that. And then at that point in time, you can see your VOP setting. You can switch that over to whatever you need it to be and then go back to set again. If you hold both the buttons down and hit the power button to turn it on, that's going to allow you to go back and forth between feet and meters depending on what preference you have and where you're working. So I obviously leave mine in feet based on where we live and what we're comfortable with in distance. Now when it comes to that VOP setting, something you might want to download or keep with you handy, unless you just want to rely on the graph on the back side of that meter I just showed you, is these two pages within the instruction manual. This has all of the VOP settings and based on types of cable that you might come across out there in the field. So if you've got one cable over the other that you are used to working on. So for me, most of what I deal with is your twisted pair 24 gauge cable that's gel filled. So that's that 66 I was telling you about. I do go back and forth occasionally. If I'm working in an area that's got a little bit more 19 or 22 gauge than, than some of the other areas have, I will switch that down to like the 68 to 64 or 60 VOP settings just to get a little bit more accurate reading. But 66 is a good default one to leave it on. It's going to get you pretty close. And then the when it comes to your footage, I'll show you what that looks like real quick. I've got a box of Cat5 here. This is really good for being able to measure like a reel of cable or a box of cable see what's left on it as well. Yes, I know the insulation on this shows the footage and you can just subtract the two numbers and see what it, see what's left on it that way. In this case, on this Cat5, it shows you how much is left in the box. If you didn't want to go that route or you couldn't read the markings anymore, this is the way you can go. So you can just clip onto your cable pair here. This only reads on two conductor wire. So you have to have two conductors to be able to read that. And then it'll read your short or your open, whatever's closest. So once you get hooked up here, you turn your meter on, letting you know it's got 574 feet on my box of cable here. And then if I was to short these two leads together, you get that tone. That's letting you know that you've got a short on your line. It's going to give you the distance to your short on the meter. The other thing this does too, is it gives you smart tone as well. You've got your little tone probe here, turn that dude on and you can hear your sound. That's going to let you be able to ID a pair if you're down somewhere on the other end. You can leave this where it's at, go down the other end, find your cable pair. And then if you short that out, it changes 
with all those tones. So something else neat about that too is if you've got multiple of these units here, these TS100s, or I don't know, a couple tone boxes, and you're wanting to get three, four, five pairs tones at a time and you're by yourself, you can hook all those up with different tones to where they're not the same. Re leave those on the one end, travel down on the far end, ID those pairs. You can get you know as many tone boxes or tones you've got, you can get that many pairs ID'd at once. So just a little pro tip for you after doing this for several years. If you're a trips, the better, right? That's all I really got to go over with you on this thing. Kind of make the decision whether the TS100 or the TS100 Pro is right for you. This one runs about twice the price as what that regular TS100 has. Most people are going to be okay with just that TS100 to start. This is a great upgrade though, especially if you're in those areas where you still got those bridge taps to deal with, or if you're just looking for that extra cable distance to be able to test and open up to 8,000 feet. That's all I got for you today, guys. I hope this was somewhat helpful. I know it was a little bit longer video. Appreciate you guys hanging in with me till the end. Y'all have a good one.